Hi, Lock, welcome, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, Belinda. Appreciate it. Great. Well, tell me a little bit about your story. How did you get started in motorsports? So when I was seven, um, sorry, a bit before that, my dad and my uncle and also my, my grandfather had all been involved in motorsport in one form or another. Mm-hmm. My grandfather was one of the first uh, people in truck racing, which was really popular in Sydney back in kind of the, the 80s and 90s. Um, yeah. And that was mainly done at Oran Park. And that was, you know, right in the centre of Sydney and it had huge crowds and that was, um, you know, a different kind of motorsport and they were involved in that. And then also my dad was uh, racing in, in dirt track speedway in, in sprint cars. And, uh, yeah, that was from kind of the through the, the mid-80s and 90s. And then, um, yeah, I guess kind of from, from what he'd done there and also my uncle racing quite competitively in sprint cars around Australia, we kind of had motorsport in the blood, you could say. And then, yeah, from there we, we moved into kind of karting. I got my first driver go-kart at seven and from there we were hooked and we kind of, you know, went through went through the journey from there. And then, uh, yeah, obviously – race started racing go-karts when i was about 10 and then from there we moved into kind of state and national competition and then when we were 14 in 2017 we moved into formula ford and that was a really good couple of years there we did the state series for the first year and the national series in 2018 and 2019 and we had some some really good results there and then um yeah year off in 2020 like a lot of other drivers and then uh yeah stepped into tcr in 2021 and and here since then and and really um you know a really cool journey so far yeah that's a pretty cool story so racing really is in your blood <laughs> yeah definitely it's um you could say i had no no hope really go, going racing either way but um yeah you know with with kind of the first driver co-kart to to now I've, you know been really motivated to kind of work on it and and and, and do well in it and um yeah obviously with tcr now we're really happy with with where we're at yeah, and have you done any speedway? No, I really would like to. That's definitely something on the bucket list. Um, you know, obviously, growing up, I was always, you know, at the speedway at, at the old Parramatta now and also, um, you know, been to a couple of the new Eastern Creek speedway and, um, yeah, it's, it's really cool. Have you been to the new Eastern Creek one? Yeah, I've been a couple of times now. It's um, It's an incredible facility, obviously, you know, it's sad that Parramatta's gone and the history that ha- that had, but, you know, the new Eastern Creek Speedway is, um, yeah, it's pretty incredible. The the investment from the government, you know, just makes it a, a seriously good facility, you know, for, for any motorsport, especially Speedway. So it's, uh, yeah, it's cool to see. And has Dad been out there? What's Dad's thoughts about it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's cool. Obviously, you know, Dad had raced at, at Parramatta, so it's kind of sad to lose that. But, yeah, yeah it's, um, you know, just as a, as a fan of the sport, um, you know, it's pretty hard to be unimpressed by by that place. So, uh, yeah, it, it's cool. We've been out there a, a couple of times and, um, yeah, it's it's a pretty cool facility. So other than your dad and your grandfather, who else inspires you in most sports? I guess dad would be my main kind of um, – inspiration because obviously you know motorsports a business and and you've really got to make sure that you know it makes sense the way you go racing and and dad has you know been there in business and motorsport and i feel like um he's a, a great person to kind of lean on for any advice that he may be able to give or, or any questions i have so yeah kind of dad's been been the main inspiration and um you know kind of growing up i never really followed a specific driver i, I obviously really liked you know, the Australian supercars and, and, and that in all its old iterations. But, um, yeah, kind of never really particularly followed one driver. Kind of just really enjoyed, you know, a good race or, or things like that. But, um, yeah, kind of I'd say Dad would be the kind of main inspiration for sure. And so, obviously, as you mentioned, you've done karting, Formula Ford, TCRs. What's what's your bigger plan? What does, what does your life in motorsport look like? Or what's the look, goal? I just think... Like any driver, it's to be professional. I think obviously TCR is a fantastic category that it's got some really good profile in Australia with some 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 really top level teams and, and drivers competing. And then obviously the international element of, you know, market relevant cars that, that race in the same spec overseas is obviously really good too. So I think if we can keep at TCR in Australia for, for the next couple of years and and really see where the category goes and take it from there. I think that would be a good plan. But yeah, you know, where where you've got to be flexible in motorsport. And you know, if I had my my goals set to 
you know, race of air supercars in, in, you know, five years ago, TCR wasn't even a category. So you've always got to kind of keep yourself flexible and, and, and see what the best opportunity is at the time and, and go from there. But, you know, we're, we're really happy with, with TCR and, and where we're at the moment. And I think, you know, if we can start to move ourselves up the grid in, in a competitive field, that that's just the, the, the goal. Yeah, and it's great. Like they've just signed on for another five years, so at least that's secured within Australia. And of course, with the TCR competition, it does give you that opportunity to go overseas as well, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. I think you know, if uh, the caliber of drivers in Australia, I think really gives TCR Australia a, a good a good profile. Obviously, you've got guys like Chaz who who won it last year, and obviously, you know, the guys like Fabian and and Tim Slade who have come in this year, I think that gives the category good profile overseas. And, you know, you look at the the field this year, you know, in qualifying all the times so close to spread out the field. And when you've got guys like that in the field, it obviously, you know, cements the competitiveness. So, yeah, I think if we can keep at it here and, and you know, TCR racing in Australia is only going to get more competitive. So I think it's a really good place to, to cut our teeth and, and learn. Yeah, and you've just come off your last round at Bathurst. Tell us, for those who've never been around Bathurst, what is Bathurst really like? Oh, it's it's pretty incredible. The the first of a time that you know you drive out out the gate and and head up the mountain for the first time, it it's pretty incredible. Um, yeah. and then obviously, yeah, the um, going from there, it's it's yeah, every lap's just incredible, and you know you've got to treat the track with so much respect because. As you as you've seen, you know many times before, it's it's bitten many a people. Um, so you know you just got to kind of build up lap by lap and and take it as it comes. But yeah, it's um it's it's pretty hard to describe in words that that place. Yeah, and has your dad been lucky enough to go around there before? No, because obviously dad went dad went and obviously stayed down the, the dirt track route. So mm-hmm. hasn't been around there in in a, in a race car. Obviously, like a lot of others have done it as a closed <laughs> road. But um you know. Not not as a racetrack, but um, yeah, we might have to uh, change that soon. <laughs> yeah, well, at least you've got that upon him. <laughs> sure. So when you're not um, at the racetrack, what's your day to day look like? Yeah, so I work in our family business. So our family is Southern Star Truck Centre. We run a used truck dealership based in Barrel and and Sydney, and uh, you know we we sell uh, buy and sell. Uh, you know, all range of trucks from, you know, small car license trucks to full B-double trailer combinations and, and anything in between. So that's a really good, um, you know, time to, to spend my time, you know, first years out of school working because it's, you know, in a family business, you've just got to kind of jump at any tasks that need to be done and every day is different and, and exciting. And, uh, yeah, obviously you learn a lot of different things and and it's really great because obviously, you know, it's, it's kind of automotive, it's it's mechanical, it's it's business. And I think all them kind of traits really help with with developing a career in motorsport. And also networking opportunities as well. 100%. That's, that's right. That's what that's what it's all about in motorsport. And, you know, if you can just keep meeting people in, in, in general, you know, um, yeah, as you say, the network is, is pretty important. And if you can just keep developing it out from there, that's 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 what um keeps you on the track yeah and you do a little bit of driver training as well yeah it's uh yeah kind of split my time kind of three ways i've got um you know the the things we do with southern star and then we've also got um some driver training uh gigs that i do as well with both private coaching and um for a organization called track school who run track days at wakefield park and also in albury and uh yeah that's obviously a really good way to again network and just keep yourself at racetracks which is always important if you can keep driving you know it just keeps your, your tools sharp which is which is important and then obviously running our own team in in tcr um you know being being the team kind of owner we're always kind of pushing to kind of find sponsors and, and obviously organize the team and make sure the car's prepared and, and our team's ready to go for with all the events so yeah kind of splitting our time three ways like that it uh, keeps us busy but you know i wouldn't want any other way I think that's a good lead up to my next question is that you are a privateer. Um, obviously, you made that decision. Um, what was the way up between going by yourself as opposed to joining an established team? Well, in the start, it was just purely just about costs and, and reducing costs and making sure it's viable to compete because obviously, you know, TCR is, is a really high profile category. And with that, there are some, you know, really top teams out there that, um, you know, are, are competing. And 
for us, it was, you know, just purely about just getting on the grid and, and, and doing laps and getting experience. And I feel like from our first round last year at Phillip Island, we're now, uh, we're now six rounds in as a team. And, um, you know, it's really exciting that, you know, we can start to be getting some good results when, when, when things go our way. And, um, yeah, obviously at, at the start, it was just kind of to reduce costs, but I feel like now we've got some, some really good team and, and engineers behind us to, to, push us up the grid and you know I think when when things go our way it's really good we had a fantastic round at Phillip Island we're top 10 in the points um and you know had some really solid results in in qualifying in the first few races so I think um that just shows that you know TCR has a kind of up and down nature where uh you know kind of certain cars suit certain tracks but when everything's going our way there's uh definitely some some really good formula there for uh, some good results awesome um, now, as you mentioned, motorsport is a business. They're my favourite words. And so um, tell me a bit about the business development side that you work on. So I saw LinkedIn. I love your LinkedIn profile um, with your profile being creating solutions for business through motorsports. I love that. Um, do you utilise LinkedIn a lot for partnership development? Yeah, it's obviously important that, you know, motorsport costs money and, and you've got to kind of pay for it one way or another. But you know, motorsport and especially TCR is great that obviously, you know, there's a lot of really good factors um, that are really good positives for, it for, for you know, uh, for, for sponsors to join your team and also nurturing their sponsors. So I think, um, yeah, LinkedIn's a great tool. Um, obviously, it can give you some pretty good information pretty quickly, um, you know, for, for doing research and things like that. But, yeah, LinkedIn's, LinkedIn's fantastic uh, for that. But... Yeah, you know, you just got to kind of word of mouth and, and just chatting with people and, and meeting as many people as you can and finding out who they know and, you know, who they might be able to put you in touch with is, is kind of the most important one. And, um, you know, cold calls are, are good and, and do work. But, um, yeah, it's just all about kind of building your network and, and, and knowing who to who to talk to and kind of just, um, yeah. I, I feel like anyone that you meet, you know, may know someone that could help you in, in your journey. So, uh, yeah, just got to, you know, be nice to everyone and, and go from there. That's what they say. You're a constant walking billboard, aren't you, in the sense of that's, trying to continue to pitch a story because you never know who knows anybody. That's what I always say. I said just tell people your story. Make sure you've got a that's story it. first of all, but then tell that's everybody your story because lots of people like to get on to your journey. Um, apart from LinkedIn, what other kind of social media platforms do you use and, and what do you prefer to use? Uh, for the motorsport, I guess um, all the normal ones. I guess I just uh, from there is Facebook and Instagram. Um, not really on Twitter or any others, but I feel like they're the kind of most relevant ones that people are on these days. But uh, yeah, I think between that and my website, um, I feel like we've kind of got enough of a, of a you know coverage that's um, you know that the people are on these days. So yeah, from there, I think it's um, it's good, but. You just got to kind of keep at it and, um, yeah, again, kind of keep your eyes open to, to the new trends that are going on and, and go from there. And is that something that you maintain yourself or do you outsource that kind of work? Yeah, so I, I do all the, the social media work, um, all the kind of channels and my website, but from there we have um, – we've got an agent who does our press releases who does a fantastic job there. Awesome. Now, I saw on Instagram on your bio – there you've got a few blokes incorporated what's that all about it's kind of yes yeah, so that's a that's a group of kind of friends that we have it's um it's it's mainly a bit of a laugh but um yeah there's kind of a, a group of us that kind of all friends in in motorsport um and then that's just a good way to kind of um have a bit of fun and and it's kind of a nice light-hearted you could kind of call it a bit of a meme page but it's um yeah it's kind of just something that naturally kind of come together but um yeah it, it's it's funny we have some you know, videos of, of um, you know, our racing and stuff like that up there. So, yeah, it's all a bit of a laugh. Um, you know, obviously, there's a lot in motorsport that, you know, once you're at the track, it's you got to be really kind of professional and really focused on, on everything that's going ahead. And I really like that aspect of it. I think the pressure and things like that is really good. But, you know, that's a kind of a bit of a thing that we have, you know, during the week, kind of let our hair down, which is a bit of fun. Awesome. Um, so you did mention that, yeah, so it's like the PR side of things. So uh, looking at your website and everything, your brand seems very strong. Is that something that you've worked on? Or, again, have you had some assistance with building your brand, like with your logo development um, and things like that? No, I do a lot of that myself, which I really enjoy. Like, obviously, 
Um, I'm not the best at it, but I feel like I've slowly been able to kind of build up and, and get a nice nice image going. And, um, you know, during the week, I do enjoy kind of that kind of logo and design work, which, um, again, I'm definitely not a professional at, but I guess just slowly built up to it. Um, and kind of, you know, if you can get everything looking kind of similar and nice between the car and your website and social media, I think that's a, a really good thing to kind of start to get people to, to, to view kind of a, a whole brand, you know. There's always def- definitely people always looking at your Instagram and your Facebook and, and your social media and kind of your, your car. But if you can kind of build that all together to, to be one kind of uniform look, I think that's, um, yeah, really, really important. And what kind of tools do you use in order to do that design? Do you use um, Adobe got, or Canva? Yeah, or I think Adobe, Adobe uh, Illustrator is the main one I use. Um, again, I've got no real idea how I'm doing it. I just kind of... <laughs> all together but um yeah that's kind of the way you got to do things sometimes yeah that's awesome letting new skill sets as you go along um and i recently saw that you did some media training with my girlfriend shelly is that right yeah yeah i did some media training with shelly so her work is fantastic and obviously you know she's very very good at what she does and that was you know really cool to go up there and 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 chat with her for the afternoon and and really understand a little bit more about kind of the media game and, and also presenting yourself. So it's just such an important thing in, in motorsport. And I feel like, um, you know, if you look at motorsport kind of to go racing, the importance probably 20% is probably on track and the rest of it is, you know, media and meeting with sponsors and, and presenting yourself well. So it's just such an important thing to, to have that right. And, you know, to, to do it with Shelley was just a really great opportunity. Yeah, so Shelly's actually uh, one of my friends, and so we actually wow. do uh, refer to her business. So um, for anyone that is listening today, I'll put in Shelly's details for the media training because for you guys at Motivate Young who do listen, uh, you would get um, 20% off her actual media course. So, yeah, That's she used to be cool. one of my personal training clients. <laughs> wow, the there you go, small world. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I should do her course. <laughs> I don't know. Actually, I'm doing, I was very excited when I saw it that you were um, doing her course. So, well done. Awesome. Um, yeah, and again, like just trying to do any of that um, personal development work on yourself, as you said, um, it is 20% racing and 80% um, offset. Even when you're speaking to the supercar drivers, they, they know pretty much like when they attend the event, the Thursday, Friday is pretty much, you know, all the media commitments that they have to undergo. Um you know, more so than the actual racing. Sometimes it's it's more than the actual racing event, depending on the, the event they're actually attending to. Um, so apart from that off-track things, uh, what about around about fitness training? Do you do any specific training for um, fitness work? Do you work with a coach? Do you do mountain bike riding, rock climbing, anything exciting? Yeah, so I've got a personal trainer here in Barrow where I live in just south of Sydney. And, um, yeah, we go twice a week in the mornings, um, which is good, obviously, you know, gets you out of bed and, and keeps you accountable, which is which is important. But, um, yeah, from there, I'm, you know, in the gym kind of probably that's in the mornings and then probably, you know, another once or twice a week just in the gym in the in the evenings um, with a bit of a program. So I think, um, yeah, it's obviously important, but I feel like there is nothing like seat time and, and some of the specific things in, in motorsport that you got to kind of build up are, are again, that come from seat time. But obviously, you know, any fitness is – is really good um but yeah definitely you know it's definitely an important part these tcr cars that we're in they they get quite hot in in the cabin and you speak to a lot of the supercar guys and they're saying you know even hotter than, than the supercars the supercars obviously have a lot of aids for, for driver cooling you've got cool suits and and helmet fans and things like that where the tcr you know it's just it's what you've got um and yeah obviously the the engines are turbocharged and the turbocharger is right behind um, the engine, which is just kind of really near our feet, so the, the heat and temperature that's generated there is is quite large, and kind of your, your feet do get quite warm. But um, yeah, yeah there are you know, some drivers that have burnt their feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's there's um, not much you can do about it, which is which is just you know part of it, and you've got to kind of be prepared for it. But a lot of the time, the adrenaline just keeps you going, and you know when when you spend every day of of, of the week to to kind of go racing, um, you know. Once you're finally in the car, there's you know you're not going to uh, even think about it. You're just kind of your mind's focused on on driving. Awesome. And how do you go about learning new tracks? Um, I'm a big fan of the sim. Uh, I use it a lot to to kind of train myself um, and kind of just keep myself sharp. And um, been quite busy recently, so I haven't had as much time as I'd like to spend on it. But yeah, it's a fantastic tool, and 
I'm quite fortunate now that you know we've been around kind of long enough to have driven a lot of the tracks that that we've um, that we're going to. So that's a kind of good at, um, asset there that you can kind of go back and look at old footage and things like that. But even so, I'll always try and spend probably between four and six hours on on the sim, specifically at that current track, to to learn. I think um, mm-hmm. you know there's nothing like learning uh, a track, actually driving it, and the sim is a great tool to do that. So. Between a sim I have at home and then a sim we have at um, a workshop in Sydney that do our um, kind of mechanical work at DNA Autosport in Sydney, they have a fantastic sim there and, and we'll look over even the data and, and footage from the simulator with our engineer to really get ourselves in the zone for the weekend. Um, it's definitely a really good tool and, you know, there's so many good programs out there now with really accurate cars and tracks that, uh, you know, can, can really accurately represent the, the tracks and, and the cars that we're driving and, you know, even down to, you know, making changes with setup and things like that to to get the car either feeling, you know, more realistic or also, you know, learning some some setup changes before you go to race weekend is is really good. So for anyone kind of, you know, either in, in entry level motorsport or even, you know, hasn't hasn't competed before, the sim is is a really, really good tool that, that I'd recommend. And obviously, you know, karting has traditionally been the path to motorsport but i feel that kind of between now and the next five and ten years i feel like sim racing will be the main uh tool into circuit racing so yeah i'm a big fan of the sims and, and definitely recommend it for for anyone out there well i heard they're even contemplating putting it at the 2032 olympics yeah it's um yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah who, who knows where it's it's all going to go and you look at kind of esports in general like obviously some of the, the money and things like that behind it with these competitions and you know million dollar to win Fortnite competitions and things like that now i'm not in, into kind of that side of things i've only into sim racing because of the motorsport connection but it is really interesting to see where the whole esports thing is going and um yeah it's just going to be interesting to see where sim racing and motorsport uh the relationship between those go in the future it's very hard luck. Like my kids are right into it, and as much as them, I don't want them to be on the screen when there's that much money to be won. Why not? <laughs> so. Yeah, sure, for sure. I think there's plenty of benefits. Obviously, um, you know, there's kind of there is a social aspect to sim racing yeah. as well. You know, you've got kind of different competitions and and the longer distance races, your twelve and twenty four hour races, which I've done a couple of, and it's it's really cool. You know, you've got to be staying up through the night and competing and. You know, you got the the teammate aspect with with driving with other drivers, and um, yeah, it's it's really cool. Yeah, I'm going to start to look more into that. Uh, and do you have any race rituals when you're competing? Not really. I just kind of um, try and switch my mind off and think about nothing before a race. Um, mm-hmm. You know, there's it's there's so much going on that you could always get worried about this or that, but. It's, I think it's important just to kind of switch off and you will never be able to control, you know, what happens at turn one or how the race mm-hmm. goes. So I think if you can just think about nothing, just keep your mind open and, and ready for anything, that's kind of the best way to go. Awesome. I know you have given us some pointers about getting started, but uh, is there any other advice you'd like to give any competitors that is just getting started in motorsport or maybe thinking about getting started in TCR in 2023? Yeah, obviously in, in motorsport, kind of as I mentioned, I think sim racing is definitely going to be an interesting one to keep an eye on. Um, I feel that, yeah, that, that will probably overtake as kind of the, the new karting. And it's great to see karting really healthy at the moment with some some huge fields and um, things like that. But, um, yeah, I feel like sim racing are actually learning how to drive race cars rather than go-karts, which are a little bit different. But, um, yeah, if, if, if motorsport and car racing is your goal, I think sim racing is – a huge tool at the moment but um yeah other than that tcr obviously it's a fantastic category and you know you've just got to be be ready for for the competition level that, that you're at and make sure that you know yourself and your team are, are ready but you know to be perfectly honest our team and things like that and, and me as a driver probably wasn't perfectly ready for tcr but i feel like you've just got to back yourself and and you know jump in the deep end and you know once you're there really start to to learn it all but um, yeah, I feel like coming out of Formula Ford, Formula Ford was such a fantastic training ground for, for young drivers. But having that year off uh, in 2020 kind of made things hard, jumping into 2021. Um, you know, mm-hmm. our first race in TCR, that was my first, per- like personally, it was my first race on a slick tyre. It was my first race in a front wheel drive. And it was my first race in 18 months, um, you know, coming from a Formula Ford round in 2019 at Phillip Island to 
2021, we had 18 months off. So I think, um, you know, if we can kind of, yeah, if you kind of just jump in with, with the right experience level, um, you know, it's, it's a great category and obviously there's a good spread in the field. So, um, yeah, as we mentioned with the different brands and things like that, you know, if you can jump into a round that where the car may suit, um, you know, they'll certainly help you. But, uh, yeah, either way, I think it's a fantastic category and we'll only continue to grow. Yeah, and how can people follow your journey? Um, just all, all through my social media channels. Obviously, um, we've got two two Facebook pages. We've got Purple Sector for our team and Lachlan Meath Motorsport as our page. And then my Instagram, Lachlan Meath, um, and then kind of our website at lachlanmeath.com. So apart from that, that's kind of normal ones. And each of those will, uh, you know, channel you to the other. So, uh, yeah, just find one of those and go from there. Awesome. And even though this is a podcast, but we do have a video live, how do you go with helmet hair? I mean, you've got a beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's 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 hard. It's hard, obviously. Uh, yeah, I don't have the easiest haircut to manage, but um, oh, uh, it's hard. Helmet hair is a weird one. Like, uh, you can get lucky and you come out looks really good, and then other days it's like bird's nest. But either way, you'll be right. Fantastic. Look, one more question: What is your favorite racetrack in the world, and why? Ooh, well, first one. The best one driven has to be Bathurst. Um, you know, obviously, you know, it's just such a historic track and and it's just not like no other um obviously you hear other drivers you know that have done everything in the world you kind of say you know the north life in in germany is kind of one of the others but you know for, for us in australia i feel like bathurst is definitely the top top track here and then kind of parallel second would probably be phillip island and the bend they're just some some really cool fast tracks that you know uh, we're really lucky to have here in australia and then um, yeah, from there, obviously, there's no real bad tracks in Australia. They're all really cool and, and unique and have some great character. So, yeah, from there, um, yeah, I have to say Bathurst is number one. Fantastic. Well, thank you again, Lachlan, for joining me. Um, all the very best for the rest of the 2022 race season, and we look forward to continuing following your journey. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Cheers. Thank you.